This is part three of a series on the error backpropagation. In this video, we will look at automatic differentiation. This video was produced in Korean and translated into English. My voice was generated by AI text to speech. In the last video, we used numerical differentiation to find the approximate gradients and use them to update the parameters of the neural network. In this video, we will look at how to find the exact gradients using automatic differentiation. There are two methods of automatic differentiation. The first method is forward derivative trace, and the second method is backward derivative trace. The second method is used to train a neural network. First, let's look at the forward derivative trace method. Let's take a simple example below. We have a function y with two variables as follows. At this point, we want to find the partial derivative of the function y with respect to the variables x1 and x2. If we find the equation of the partial derivative of y with respect to x1 using symbolic differentiation, we get this. Substituting 2 comma 5 here gives 5.5. That means the slope of y with respect to x1 at this point is 5.5. Now, let's find this slope using the forward derivative trace of automatic differentiation. Let's construct a computational graph representing the evaluation of the function y. Circles are nodes and represent primitive arithmetic operations such as plus, minus, sine, cosine, etc. Lines are edges that represent the input or output data of a node. Data points x1 and x2 are entered into the input nodes. The input node is an operator that outputs input data as is. V means the output value of the node. The output of this node is 2, which is the value of x1. And the output of this node is 5, which is the value of x2. This node is the operator that computes log. Entering v1 into this node will output log of v1. In this way, we can construct a graph that evaluates the function y on the left. Following the green forward primal trace will output the final y value for inputs x1 and x2. Now let's follow the red forward derivative trace to find the partial derivative of this function with respect to x1. The partial derivative of y with respect to x1 is denoted by y dot. And the partial derivative of vi with respect to x1 is denoted by vi dot. By definition, v1 dot is the partial derivative of v1 with respect to x1. Since v1 is x1, v1 dot will be 1 v2 dot is the partial derivative of v2 with respect to x1. v2 is independent of x1, so v2 dot is 0. v3 dot is the partial derivative of v3 with respect to x1. In this graph, v3 is log of v1. Differentiating this with respect to x1 gives us this. Since v1 dot is 1, and v1 is 2, v3 dot will be 1 half. v4 dot is the partial derivative of v4 with respect to x1. In this graph, v4 is v1 times v2. Differentiating this with respect to x1 gives us this. Then v4 dot becomes 5, v5 dot is the partial derivative of v5 with respect to x1. In this graph, v5 is v3 plus v4. 
differentiating this with respect to x1 gives us v5 dot of 5.5. v6 dot is the partial derivative of v6 with respect to x1. And v6 is sine of v2. Differentiating this with respect to x1, v2 dot is 0, so v6 dot will be 0. Finally, y dot is the partial derivative of y with respect to x1. In the graph, y is v5 minus v6. Differentiating this with respect to x1 gives us y dot of 5.5. This is the partial derivative of y with respect to x1 that we want to find. This is the same as the result of symbolic differentiation on the left. The partial derivative of y with respect to x2 can also be found using the same process. This method is time-consuming because it requires the forward derivative trace for all variables. An improvement over this problem is the reverse derivative trace method, which we will look at on the next page. Next, let's look at the reverse derivative trace method. This method corresponds to a generalized backpropagation algorithm in that it propagates derivatives backward from a given output. Let's differentiate the function y, which is an example from the previous page, with respect to x1 and x2. Construct a computational graph to evaluate the function y, as in the previous page. If we input the given x1 and x2 into this graph and perform forward primal trace, the final y will be output. The partial derivative of y with respect to variable vi is denoted as vi bar. v1 is x1, so vr is x1 bar. Now let's trace this graph from right to left to find the derivatives. By definition, v5's bar is the partial derivative of y with respect to v5. In the graph, y is v5 minus v6. v6 is independent of v5, so the partial derivative of v6 with respect to v5 is 0. Therefore, v5 bar becomes 1. v6 bar is the partial derivative of y with respect to v6. v5 is independent of v6, so the partial derivative of v5 with respect to v6 is 0. Therefore, v6 bar will be negative 1. v3 bar is the partial derivative of y with respect to v3. This can be written like this, by the chain rule. The first derivative in the chain is v5 bar. v5 is v3 plus v4. And v4 is independent of v3. So v3 bar becomes 1. v4 bar is the partial derivative of y with respect to v4. This can be written like this, by the chain rule. V3 is independent of V4, so V4 bar is also 1. You can see that both equations are multiplied by V5 bar. This is the partial derivative of Y with respect to V5 backpropagated to V3 and V4. Here we can make a simple rule. This part is the backpropagated derivative. And this part is the next operation. v1 bar is the partial derivative of y with respect to v1. According to the simple rule we just created, v1 bar can be represented as follows. The derivatives backpropagated to v1 are v3 bar and v4 bar. And the next operations are log and multiplication. That is, this part is v3 bar backpropagated in this direction. And this part is the next operation, log of v1. This part is v4 bar backpropagated in this direction. 
And this part is the next operation, V1 times V2. Then the first term becomes V3 bar over V1. And the second term becomes B4 bar times V2. So V1 bar will be 5.5. This is identical to the result of the forward derivative trace computed on the previous page. If we calculate V2 bar in the same way as above, we get 1.7163. Now all the partial derivatives of y with respect to x1 and x2 have been computed. This method allows you to find the partial derivatives with respect to x1 and x2 all at once in a single trace. Therefore, this method is faster than the forward derivative trace method. Next, let's see how automatic differentiation is performed in neural networks. We have a simple neural network like the one on the left. This has a total of 10 parameters. The output layer has two neurons, and each neuron outputs a sigmoid value. And we have an arbitrary loss function, L. L is a function of y, y hat 1, and y hat 2. During one backpropagation, we want to find all gradients of loss L with respect to 10 parameters. A graph to evaluate the loss L of this network can be constructed as follows. As on the previous page, the circles are the primitive arithmetic operations. And the straight lines are the flow of data. The output of the first hidden neuron is real u of x times w1 plus b1. In the graph on the right, this operator multiplies x by w1 and outputs this. And b1 is added here. Then real u operation is applied. This is the output of the first hidden neuron. If you input x into this graph and perform the forward propagation, y hat 1 and y hat 2 will be output. The loss L is then calculated using the desired output y. You can see that this graph has the same functionality as the graph we used as an example on the previous page. Backpropagation causes the gradient of the loss L with respect to each parameter to be propagated to the left. As we did on the previous page, we can use this propagated Y1 hat bar to find the gradient of L with respect to B3. And by combining the propagation in this direction with the propagation in this direction, we can get the gradient of L with respect to W1. You can see that backpropagation in a neural network is the same as the reverse derivative trace method on the previous page. Using the reverse derivative trace method, we can find all gradients of L with respect to 10 parameters at once. Using these gradients, all 10 parameters can be updated by the gradient descent algorithm. This method allows us to find the gradient with respect to each parameter more accurately and much faster than the numerical differentiation seen in the previous video. Let's take a look at the automatic differentiation feature in TensorFlow. TensorFlow provides automatic differentiation capabilities through the Gradient Tape API. Let's take a quick look at the TensorFlow documentation regarding Gradient Tape. To differentiate automatically, TensorFlow needs to remember what operations happen in what order during the forward pass. Then, during the backward pass, TensorFlow traverses this list of operations in reverse order to compute gradients. 
This is the same as the reverse derivative trace method we looked at on the previous page. TensorFlow provides the gradient tape API for automatic differentiation. That is, computing the gradient of a computation with respect to some inputs, usually tf.variables. TensorFlow records relevant operations executed inside the context of a gradient tape onto a tape. TensorFlow then uses that tape to compute the gradients of a recorded computation using reverse mode differentiation. Now let's solve the previous example using TensorFlow's gradient tape. At this point, let's find the partial derivatives of y with respect to x1 and x2. Set x1 and x2 as variables in TensorFlow. The initial values are 2, 5. Next, we use gradient tape to record the operations performed on the function y onto a tape. This is the forward pass. And we use this tape to compute the gradients with respect to each variable in the backward pass. Let's check the results. At this point, the partial derivative of y with respect to x1 is 5.5. And the partial derivative of y with respect to x2 is 1.716. This result is the same as what we just got by the reverse derivative trace. So far, we have looked at error backpropagation through three videos.